Oh, hi. I'm just building a water heater today. Well, we are building a water heater, so keep watching and we'll see how it goes. So here's the, the drill thing that you'll see why we're going to use it now. And we're going to be using this 20 mil class 3 LDPE. And I think this is a sufficient height over the shower there so that we have a little bit of a gravity flow. Let's let's start with rolling this pipe. It's gonna be a it's gonna be weird. Let's try that. This is what we need to do. This is where the holes come into play with the cable ties. The packet says these are UV rated, so let's hope that's true. But we're going to be tying the pipe down onto the plank like this with each one of them into a coil as tight as possible so that I can get as much of the 100 meters of pipe onto this thing. It probably won't be 100 meters. So that is uh, an issue. But we're going to see how much we can get on here. Loop the whole thing through and I'll show you how I'm going to do this and then we will just fast forward to the end. So a few turns in, this is what it looks like. Quite, quite arty. And this is a complete 100 meter roll. This will be a closed loop that goes to the tank that's gonna fit there. So when we resume this video after a short break, we will be retrofitting the tank with some tank adapter so that we can get that tank up there and that will be the storage tank. Over there is the location of the container. I need to supply that with water from our main line here. The 40 is the main and the 32 is an overflow. I'm going to be inserting this T piece, 40 to 20 millimeters, into the 40 mil here. And to do that, we need to go up and up to the water tank and quickly turn off the main so that we don't flood out this place and waste water. So we close this valve, we open this one to prevent vacuum problems in the pipe and then we go back down and add that T-piece in there quick. There you can see, ignoring that one, the thermosiphon loop, top, bottom, closed loop in the heat exchanging coils. So as the water cools down, drops, enters the coil, gets heated up, moves to the top of the tank. You see I'm filling the tank by pushing the cold water 
through the loop and to the bottom so I can see there's a lot of air coming up so that's air that must not be in the loop so that's a good way to prime it. Trapper, no. Trapper, no. In summer we don't really need hot water because it's so hot that a cool shower is nice. But now in winter we don't have that problem, the water is icy cold and if you're lucky if you shower very quickly by 4 p.m. then you will get a little bit of hot water. So with all this abundant sunshine and the scarcity of clouds and rain here I'm definitely sure that solar water heating is a solution and try to work with what we've got. Pipe and a tank, it costs almost nothing, we've got the energy, let's see if it works. Okay, this is now the third afternoon that I've been trying to get this thermo siphon to work. It only works when we manually start it, so a thermo siphon is sensitive to air in the coils, it is sensitive to any impediments and it relies on the heat exchanger, which is the coils that's lying in the sun, to be much hotter than the actual content of the container that we're heating. I've switched over to plan B, which is still off-grid, uh, still solar-based, and this is what you're hearing right here. Instead of tuning all the time, and I've made a million tunings here and turning the pipe and trying to get the heights right, I decided to add a pump to this. So we've got this 50 watt solar panel and a 12 volt self-priming little pump that's like 150 rand a take a lot it's a cheap pump it does a few liters a minute it's very slow but that's perfect and i've hooked that up to draw water through the heat exchanger coil using the solar power so when the sun comes up this starts pumping and it pulls the water through the heat exchanger and hot water is entering the drum as we speak now even with a low afternoon sun through the hazy clouds like that the water coming out there now is quite warm and on the initial test this afternoon the water was uncomfortably hot coming through that so tomorrow after a long day sun will heat those panels it'll start up it'll start pumping i'll see how it goes i'll check it in the afternoon there's no reason it shouldn't work just need to tidy it up and once it's tested and functional i will definitely do a few changes just get some proper piping in get the angles right maybe get the coil a bit closer here and then all the excess hose I'll shorten it and then also just get some weather proof kind of roofy over this uh, this pump but this is version 0.1 of our water heating system let's go and check the temperature of the barrel because today was technically the first day that this thing ran by itself and from morning till now. I'm going to test it with the only thermometer that I've got now is one of these things. So that's body temperature mode, not body temperature mode. So if you look at the rocks in the sun, 36.2, black lead 40. So that's that's the water that's being pumped through the heat exchanger black coils there. These pipes are 38 and the water temperature here measures about 36 but we definitely do need to insulate the pipe running down to the shower because once the sun sets and it gets cold obviously you'll lose a lot of temperature for the water running down there I'm sure you can do this better than I did you need your water mass you need your heat exchanger coils and you can then either do it with a thermo siphon or like me when I got desperate use a pump. If an aquarium pump allows this sort of temperature, say up to about 60 degrees, then an aquarium pump submersible in there would be even better. There would be no noise and the water would be pumped inside the drum. So then you don't have any of these external pumps or pipes. Lastly, you can put two more tank adapters on there, hook up a copper pipe to a rocket stove with a heating coil, and then you can have backup heat in case there's no sun that day. You can do exactly the same thing using a rocket stove to heat the water through a copper coil. So I hope this helped. I hope you liked the video. And uh, thanks again to our Patreon members.
our newest Patreon member, Joe Russell. Thank you, dude. He's probably going to come and visit us one day, so you can at least have a hot shower here, Joe. Um, and then also our other Patreon members of this month is Jacques, Zachary and Kevin. So yeah, thanks a lot and see you next time. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. <laughs> hello. <laughs>